This is Annie Grace, and you're listening to this Naked Mind podcast, where without judgment, pain, or rules, we explore the role of alcohol in our lives and culture. Hi, friends. This is Annie Grace, author of This Naked Mind, answering questions. And today we have a question from Mark in the UK, and Mark asked, does alcohol make you happy? Um, and I think the answer is that the, there's a few answers, but first I think the idea of alcohol can make you very happy because you believe that alcohol makes you happy. So that idea alone, because our minds are so incredibly powerful, has a lot of power in it. So if you believe something, it's true. There's a saying, um, you can or you can't, it's just up to you whether you can or you can't. What you say to yourself becomes really true. So if you have this deep ingrained belief that alcohol makes you happy, that's sort of half the battle. And I do think that the reality behind that is that drinking creates this sort of sense of expectation. So you have an expectation for your mood to change. If you are having a bad day, you expect it to get better. You have an expectation for release. You have an expectation for whatever you're dealing with to somehow dissolve into a bottle or for you to loosen up and and become happy. And so when you drink, this does in some ways happen because the primary effect of alcohol is on two neurotransmitters, so glutamate and GABA. And although they're very different neurotransmitters, alcohol's effect on each has similarities. And the similarities are that they slow down your brain activity. They slow down your ability for your senses, um, you know, your sense of feel to register in your brain. And so if you wanna understand what like a little alcohol does to your brain in the early stages, especially when you feel that euphoria, you can kind of think about what a lot of alcohol does to your brain. So, you know, when you're really drunk, you have this lack of coordination, lack of memory, slurred speech, dizziness, disorientation, you have all these sorts of things. And if you just back that up, that's what's happening at the early stages as well. Your brain's ability to react to things, to um, have, these types of reactions is slowing down and your brain's thought process is slowing down. And so if you were having a hard day or stressed out and this happens, this can definitely masquerade as happiness because all of a sudden the thoughts you are having are no longer as powerful and as present. And I think another thing that alcohol does is it can bring you into the present moment in a way that again takes your thoughts and when your thoughts diminish, you can be more in the present moment. And that's a very uh, quick thing that happens with alcohol. It lasts for like 15, 20 minutes and then you get kind of out of it. But the reality of being in the present moment is that you stop worrying about what's happening in the past and you stop worrying about what's happening in the future. And again, that feeling is can be very akin to happiness. So I think that the brain slowing down can have some very illusory effects on you thinking that you're happy and the numbing effect of alcohol can take away the things that you think are making you unhappy and trick you into feeling that you're happy so yes in the short term there's probably some validity to the statement that alcohol makes you happy i can't i can't probably deny that but i do think that it's more about numbing yourself than it is about true happiness what i can tell you is that the long-term effect of alcohol has an absolutely terrifying effect on our overall happiness so Brene brown she says there's no such thing as selective emotional numbing when we numb the dark we numb the light and i feel that that's very true and that's exactly what happens with alcohol so not only is this theoretical you know from Brene's research and what she's seen in individuals but this is really deeply neurological and you truly do numb the feelings of pleasure over time everyday pleasures with alcohol so this is how it happens when you drink you know you get this sense of euphoria and your body's intention is to maintain homeostasis so in all things whether it's the temperature of your body or your emotional mood, it wants to bring yourself back into balance. And alcohol and all addictive drugs, they kind of skyrocket um, some of your neurotransmitters inside your brain and short circuit your pleasure circuit. So you have this illusion of pleasure, but really your body is trying to bring that back down because your body can't operate with that artificial stimulation. And it's just not good for your brain. And so your brain says, okay, well that's not okay, so I'm gonna try to bring it back down. And this is a big reason that you have tolerance. And what tolerance is, is you need more, of course, to feel the same amount of stimulation you are feeling. 
and tolerance, what it actually is, one of the things that's happening is your brain is releasing a counter chemical. That counter chemical is called dynorphin. And what dynorphin does is it turns down the pleasure felt and perceived by your brain. So it turns down those pleasure centers. So you've got alcohol coming in and then dynorphin coming in. And then you drink more alcohol to counteract the fact that there's more dynorphin over time and you've got more dynorphin coming in. So typically if you thought like a graph like your mood for the day and say a peak would be going out to a meal with a good friend or you know having sex or falling in love you know and stuff like this and you have this normal graph well alcohol and any addictive drug they spike this graph you know you have all this extra um, activity in these pleasure centers of your brain this very artificial activity and so it spikes this graph so dynorphin comes in and it balances it back out what happens over time is because alcohol takes between like six and ten days to leave your body that dynorphin that numbing vehicle is always present it's ever present and over time the things that you used to enjoy like going out with a friend or reading a good book or you know they become less effective because they hit your pleasure centers less because this dynorphin is constantly pre pre present. So you're, in, instead of just being like this, you bring dynorphin in and your alcohol and pleasures start to go downward over time. And I mean, this is what is exactly reported in people that eventually become, you know, physically dependent on alcohol is that nothing ends up being very fun without drinking. And I know at the end of my drinking days, like things weren't fun without drinking. And it's really easy to interpret that as yes, alcohol makes me happy. The truth was not drinking made me very unhappy because of how much of this dynorphin I had in my brain, how, you know, emotionally and physiologically, psychologically dependent I had become on alcohol. So. So you believe that you're getting a real pleasure and alcohol is the source of that when really alcohol's effect is to introduce dynorphin, which is stealing pleasure and it's making it so that you don't experience everyday pleasures. So again, you know, in severe addiction, the liking and the wanting when they were once together, you wanted what you liked and you liked what you wanted. When you get addicted to something, those things separate and all of a sudden you want desperately what you don't actually like. And again, this is what people in late stage, you know, drinking addiction report is that not only do normal things not register on the pleasure scale, alcohol is the only thing that makes them happy and eventually over time alcohol can't even make them happy because the wanting and the liking have gone their tolerance is so high that they're not even getting anything out of it but the wanting and the craving and that's due to the dopamine in your system is so strong that you desperately want something you don't even like um the good news is that most of us haven't hit that stage. You know, most of us are at the early stages of some pleasures are becoming numbed because of drinking. We're starting to wonder, you know, why things aren't as fun without drinking. And the truth is why things aren't as fun without drinking, blame it on the drinking. It's the drinking's fault. If you take the drinking away over time, everything gets more fun and your normal pleasure response that you had when you were a kid that you had before you stopped drinking comes back. It's a beautiful thing. It's a really beautiful thing. Um, so I think that when you know, the good news is that most of us haven't reached that point. And if we just start to treat it mindfully with caution, knowing that this happens, knowing that although all the billboards and advertisements are saying this is joy juice, knowing that actually in your brain, it can steal daily pleasure from you. I think just knowing that is, is really empowering and can help you make, you know, better personal decisions about what you really want in your life. And my final thought is that, you know, no matter what that illusion is of joy and happiness that alcohol can bring in the short term, it can't hold a candle to the true joy and true happiness that you can have from true pleasures over time. So it is a very artificial stimulation. And, um, and so that is my answer. Thank you, Mark, for the question. I appreciate it. Again, Annie Grace, author of This Naked Mind, please post questions below. I'll keep answering them and have a wonderful day. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.